Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my guide to the Siren Song Sea, the level 61 dungeon accessed through the Stormblood 4.0 main scenario quests. This dungeon rewards item level 260 armor, accessories, and weapons, including one free item specifically for your current job upon completion. The final boss also has a chance at dropping a minion. This dungeon is broken up into several trash pulls, some environmental hazards, and three bosses. To skip to a specific boss, please check the description of the video for time skips. The first bit of trash starts right on the boat you start on and just contains some banshees to kill. After the first set, four more will spawn, so pick them up and mow them down. After that are some more banshees, crack laws, a ymir, and a carlobos, so just pull them at your own pace and kill them off. They don't do anything special. You'll soon reach the first boss. The first boss of this dungeon is Lugat. This boss is very straightforward. They have a half a rune cleave that knocks you back if it hits you, and a stack and split damage mechanic. When the boss does Sea Swallows All, it'll pull everyone into the center of the room and attempt to hit you with AoEs, which you just move out of. When the boss does Overtow, they will knock everyone back instead before doing the split damage mechanic again. If everyone just runs to the center of the room and splits the damage, you'll be fine. Avoid AoEs, stack up when you see the marker, and you'll be good to go. The trash leading up to the second boss is also fairly straightforward, but there will be lots of AoEs that spawn puddles dropping as you're trying to kill mobs. Stand out of the puddles, and you won't have any problems. Let's just move on to the second boss. The second boss is the Governor. The primary mechanic here is to avoid being hit by mechanics, which seems redundant, but they give you magic vulnerability stacks. These make you take more damage from his room-wide AoE, Bloodburst. The first attack he uses is Shadow Flow, which covers right around the boss in the middle of the room, as well as several other areas of the arena in lines, with gunks that damage you and give you those stacks. Stay out of the AoEs, and you'll be fine. The second attack is Enter Knight, which pulls you towards the governor and tethers you to him. You want to run away from him when he does this to break the tether, otherwise you'll start accruing those vulnerability stacks. Finally, every shadow flow after the first one, he'll also use Shadow Split to spawn a bunch of adds just before he does it. These adds don't attack, but they'll walk around the arena and spawn additional shadow flow AoEs you must avoid standing in, so move away from them as you see them adjust. Rinse, repeat, win! The final packs of trash start off simple enough. There's lots of weak mobs and a stronger mob with each pack. As you move further and further in though, you'll eventually get to the fleshless captive, who occasionally tries to seduce everyone with seductive scream, which then has you walk towards him and get hit by his flood spell. It's not lethal, but just stunning or silencing the scream bypasses the seduce altogether so you can dodge the following flood. Kill him, and you're on to the final boss. The final boss of this dungeon is Lorelei. This boss does have a room-wide AoE and circular AoEs to dodge, but the primary mechanic here is the combination of Virgin Tears and either Morbid Advance or Morbid Retreat. When the boss does Virgin Tears, it spawns puddles that deal damage over time should you be standing in them, so don't. Once she has used Virgin Tears, she will then shortly after do either Morbid Advance or Morbid Retreat. Morbid Advance will force your character to walk in whatever direction they are facing when it finishes casting, so ensure there is not a puddle in your line of sight in front of you when it finishes. Morbid Retreat causes you to run in the opposite direction of where you are facing, so make sure there are no puddles behind you. As the fight drags on, more and more puddles will spawn, including one that covers the outer ring of the arena, so try to hover around the middle of the arena and just face the correct direction based on which attack is coming out. Do this a few times and you've got it. Thank you for watching my guide to the Siren Song Sea. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and check out my other dungeons and guides on my channel, and stay tuned for everything you'll need, Stormblood. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.